Hey guys, it is Mike from Baltimore Rides here. It is 3 a.m. Tuesday morning. It's a late one, I'm not gonna lie. Um, wrapping up my Monday night video, Monday the 5th of March, the Ides of March, um, for those of you that are history buffs. But um, uh, give me a minute, let me just collect my brain for a minute. You know, good night, guys. It was a really good Monday. I started later than I wanted to. Um, I overslept a little bit. I'm gonna eat some beef jerky. Um, very high in protein and, uh, you know, n n a little bit of fat. But I like it for the protein content. Um, and I'm hungry at this time of night. This is like the time when I get a snack craving. So I'm gonna be rude and talk while I'm eating. But you guys are gonna forgive me. I'm pretty sure of that. So, pretty good night, you know. I had, um, I started about 3.30-ish. Stayed around Baltimore tonight. It's a Monday. Uh, made my way to Towson before I actually went online. But first I had to get my oil change. I'm very disappointed with Jiffy Lube. Um, not my service, but... I keep a little micro LED flashlight right here in my door panel, um, kind of like the little part you pull your door shut with. It's perfect. It was like this big and it fit right in there. And it was a high power LED flashlight. I just bought batteries for it too, because when it, it's nighttime and I'm driving residential and I'm trying to find door numbers, sometimes the lighting sucks. And so having a little flashlight that I can like shine out the window throws just enough light on the door that I can read the number without it looking like a police spotlight on their door. And I had put new batteries in it just this morning before I got in the car, right when I got in the car. Went to Jiffy Lube, oh, got my coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, went to Jiffy Lube. They changed my oil, whatever. And then this evening, right about six o'clock, I went to look for it because, I don't know, whatever. I looked down and I noticed it was missing. And I thought, what the blank? What the hell? Now, no one's going to take that out of my car from the back seat or over here. Because you can't even see it. It's in this little nook. But who else was in my driver's seat today? Jiffy Lube guys. Because they drive your car into the Jiffy Lube bay. And then they drive it out. And then they're like all crawling around it like a pit crew. They're vacuuming my floors and they're doing whatever the hell they do in there. And one of them has sticky fingers. And it's fucking annoying. Pardon my language. But, you know, thievery is one of those things that I just hate. I hate thievery. Because now I have to find a new place to get my oil changes. I can never go back there. Because no matter what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I'm going to call and talk to the manager, of course. But what's he going to say? I'm sorry, sir, are you sure? I don't know how it happened, or I don't know what happened, or whatever. At the end of the day, though, he's not gonna know which one of his meatheads did it. And he's certainly not gonna fire somebody for stealing a $20 flashlight. So, because he's not gonna know which one was the, the stupid crook that did it. So me, I can never go back there again, because now I know that one of them is untrustworthy. Sorry, it's just how I am. Like, one of them is a snake in the grass. A little crooked thief. Who, even though he's working an honest job, doing an honest living, I, I have no, no regrets about mechanics. I think they're very amazing people with a gift for mechanical knowledge. I myself am a novice mechanic. I do it for my own self. I'm not able to do it for a living. But... I have a great amount of respect for people that know how to turn wrenches. But if you're not happy enough with the job you're doing and the money you're making doing it, that you feel like you need to take things that don't belong to you, that's disgusting. That's just horrible and disgusting. So the Jiffy Lube in Westminster, where I live, the town that I live in, I can never go back to. And I'm gonna tell the manager that. I don't know which one of them took it because there were like four different Jiffy Lube guys messing with my car. But I can never, ever 
go back to his store again. So now I gotta find another location to get oil changes at. I really like Jiffy Lube. They've always been good to me. I've never had a problem. Fast, efficient. I've been going to that Jiffy Lube for a decade. And it's very sad for me, not just about the stupid flashlight, but about the principle of it, is that my trust is gone. You know, it's like people that get mugged or raped or whatever. Something horribly tragic happens to them in an everyday situation, like walking home from work or in a parking garage or at a park or whatever. And then they feel like they're, you know, they'll get robbed in their home. They get their house burglarized and they come home to see their house destroyed. And all of a sudden that safety net is broken. And now they feel like something that was always safe and trustworthy is now uh, tainted. Well, that's the way I feel in a very, very small micro way about this situation. And it was funny. The irony of the situation is I had about four or five dollars from a cash tip, like, you know, four dollars, I think it was in just in ones sitting in my little center console thingy here. And I thought to myself, let me grab those four dollars and put them in my pocket because I don't want to give anybody eye candy. But my car's full of other shit. I mean, I got a camera mounted to the ceiling. I got sunglasses. I got cords out my you know what. And what is the guy pocket? A $20 flashlight. I mean, really? It's like a Walmart or Home Depot flashlight. I mean, we're not talking some high-end maglev whatever. You know, we're talking a little $20 flashlight. It's just sad. So, enough about that. So I got my oil change. I went to Taos and I got to work. Um, I checked up my mom. She's still at the other place because the house that she's supposed to be at, the power is still out because of that stupid windstorm. Um, so they've got her at another one of their facilities temporarily kind of just shacking up until the power is fixed in their neighborhood. Um, and I just wanted to make sure she was okay. And, um, and then I got to work. And I'll be honest, guys, Lyft was great tonight. Um, I did Uber a little bit. I actually started out with Uber because Lyft was not price surging. There was no prime time. And it was like 3 o'clock. So I said, well, I got a little bit of time. Let me do some Uber real quick. So I did like one or two Lyft trips. Then I did some Uber. Um, and then Uber died off quicker. So then I went back to Lyft because Lyft surged again, like later. So I did $150 with Lyft and I did 47, yeah, 46 or $47 with Uber. So, you know, 190 something dollars, $200 night, let's call it. Um, on top of that, they did my $55 prime power driver bonus, Lyft, Lyft's bonus thingy kicked in. So it's a $255 night. Um, you know, which, uh, you know, guys, it's a good Monday. I mean, starting off a Monday with a $200 night is great. Um, the $55 is not this week. Obviously that's last week's bonus, but, um, Lyft does not pay that out until Mondays. So, you know, whereas Uber pays it out instantly the minute you qualify. So, you know, that's one of the little minor gripes I have about Lyft is that they make you wait for your bonus. But I get that because their acceptance rate is fluctuating. It's not like once you hit the driving portion, the number of trips portion, the money's yours, like Uber's Quest. You have to maintain that acceptance rating, and I guess that's why they can't pay you out until the week's done, because you could screw the pooch and just hit cancel, cancel, cancel and accidentally drive your rating down, like kind of like I did the other day. Um, so, you know, differences, but nothing major. I was supposed to go this morning to the office down in DuPont Circle for Uber, their actual office, and um, for some roundtable meeting at 9 o'clock this morning in D.C. But I was out late on the road last night, and... I just didn't have it in me to get up at 6 a.m. to be in D.C. at like 8 to catch an Uber from a Safeway where I could park for free all the way down to DuPont Circle for some stupid meeting. Because there's no parking in DuPont Circle. I mean, it's a nightmare. Um, so, 
the logistics of that were just a mess. And I think if they had wanted us to do that, they should have sent those RSVPs out like five days in advance, not Sunday night. Because that's a little bit extreme. Me getting the thing at seven o'clock on a Sunday and then having to plan the logistics of where it is and all that crap. So, a little bit disappointing. Honestly, the only reason why I was going to go anyway was really just a gripe. Because I'm really a Lyft driver now with an Uber problem. Kind of like, uh, you know, okay, so this is funny, but I'll tell you the story anyway. And it's kind of wrong, but I'm going to say it because it's funny. So I grew up in New England, Massachusetts to be exact. And the Cape, um, you know, like Massachusetts is like a little hook. There's a little hook at the end that kind of sticks out into the ocean. And it's called the Cape. So right on the very, very tip is a little town called Provincetown, or P-Town, P short for province, that originally, 16, 17, 1800s, was a fishing community because it's out in deep water. You know, um, the Atlantic is a very rich fishing area. And so it was a fishing community. And then something happened in the 60s and 70s and it became like a gay community. There's nothing wrong with gays. I'm not saying that. It's not about that. But it became a gay community, you know, lesbian, gay, whatever, all the different letters. I get them all L, B, G, T, or I don't know. I get that stuff wrong all the time. It doesn't mean I'm a, a, a bad person. I just screw it up in my head. Um, so it became this like kind of gay community. And it's funny because I was watching a documentary the other day. I don't know, it was a while ago. And um, I think it was Anthony Bordeaux. And he was visiting there in one of his little around the world kind of trippy places. And he was talking to this fisherman and the fisherman was saying, it was ironic because we used to be a fishing community with a gay problem. And now we're a gay community with a fishing problem. Um, and I, I've always kind of held that quote in my head. It's a funny quote. Um, but I feel like that's kind of what I am. I used to be an Uber driver with a Lyft side gig. And now I'm a Lyft driver with an Uber side gig. You know, I, I'm only using Uber now when I have to. My weekend quest, because it's free money. Um, and when there's a little bit of surge. And I think I can take advantage of it. So, you know, that's the reality there, guys. Is that if Uber was paying better, I had better bonuses, better structure and certainly better customer service, I'd still be loyal to them. I would still be 100% loyal to them. But let's be honest, guys, it, it knocked the wind out from under me in December and January when I was begging them to fix my quest so that I could get back on, on track. And they, they weren't. And so Lyft, like that, fixed it right up and I was sold because to me that's customer service. So, you know, tonight guys, perfect example. Surge, you know, Lyft's version of Surge, it's called prime time, but I'm just gonna call it Surge because that's the common term now. Um, Lyft was surging all night. I mean, all the way up till 10 o'clock at night, it was, there was Surge all around, DC, around uh, Baltimore. I was in Towson, I was in Parkville, I was in Owings Mills, um, Catonsville, the city, downtown. I mean, we're talking all around. There was just red, pink blotches of surge. And to me, guys, that's what it's all about. Why do a $3.37, a $3.37 trip when you can make that trip a six or seven dollar trip under surge? You know, and then you look at like a suburb trip, you know, three, four, six, eight miles. It goes from being a 5 to $8 trip to being a $16 trip. And that's how they add up, guys. I did 11 trips with Lyft for $150. 11 trips. It's great average. It's like a $15 average, all because of search. I mean, that's working smart, not hard, guys. And it's not always easy. Last week... Tuesday, Wednesday, I struggled. They were slower nights. Tonight, for whatever reason, Monday's got a ton of surge. Um, I don't know if it's a thing 
or if it's just dumb luck. But Monday has been surging consistently the past couple weeks. Um, so there you go. You know, I think that's a thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's a thing until I see it fade away. But right now, it's a pattern that Monday is full of surge. And it was steady. Steady, steady, steady. Didn't even go near the airport once today. I was downtown a couple times, but mostly I was up in that northern, western Baltimore bubble inside the 695 Beltway. <coughs> you know, Cold Spring, Northern Parkway, Pimlico, 40, Edmondson, all that area. Bel Air Road, <coughs> you know, right near Morgan. Um, you know, Morgan is hot, guys. If you're driving Baltimore, Morgan State has got a lot of moving people around. It's a good little spot. Hopkins is a good little spot. Um, you know, like West Baltimore, if, you, if you're okay driving in a, a rougher neighborhood, I don't care. Um, but some people don't like driving in the sketch parts of town. But like Edmondson Ave, always activity. 40 Edmondson, always activity. Liberty Heights Ave, always activity. Mondaman, always activity. You know, you got to keep your windows up and your doors locked, but as long as you're moving, nobody's going to bother you. If you're stopping, waiting for somebody, just keep your doors locked until they, they come up. Plain and simple. Um, you know, it's no big deal. They're good people. Most of them are just really good people that just need to go where they're going. There's no reason to prejudge everybody based on a couple stupid people in one neighborhood. So... You know, and I say the same thing about D.C. when people give me grief about driving in Southeast. It's the same thing. Great people living in a rough part of town. Not everybody can afford to live in the good parts of town. Some of those folks are hardworking, working two jobs, three jobs, just to scratch a living. And they got to live in a rough part of town. Some of them grew up in a rough part of town, but they're good people. They really are. Tonight, I had a great conversation with a lady. Picked her up in a very, very sketch part of town. Going to work, of course, at... 10 30 at night you know she works third shift and uh just super super nice lady really really good conversation i mean you know she doesn't own a car she can't afford a car um, she works third shift so that she can get home sleep for a little bit and then you know be awake when her her daughter gets home from school i mean come on guys that's that's regular old just blue collar trying to make make a living in america like the rest of us and i have a ton of respect for people like that so, you know, before you prejudge people, before you look down your nose at somebody, you know, and I got a big nose, so, you know, I tend to, I tend to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I really do. Um, and everybody asks me, you know, like, what are your worst customers? And I'll tell you guys, it's not some, you know, blue collar person I picked up in a sketch neighborhood. It's the bougie, you know, I call them yuppies, which is totally like an 80s, 90s term, but the bougie kind of snobby people that sit in the back seat, you know, I pick them up from the Sagamore Pendry or, you know, the, the, the Four Seasons or one of those posh restaurants that's like super expensive, you know, Woodbury or whatever. And they're talking to themselves, complaining that their three-week vacation in Cabo San Lucas got cut short because of a tropical storm. Like, really? That's, what you're, that's your first world problems that you're crying about? I can't relate to those people. I struggle to. I mean, I can have good conversations with intelligent people, people that are sophisticated, with advanced educations, who can talk about very complica complicated things. I can usually hold my own with some of those folks. But... If you're so snotty and bougie and um, you think you're better than everybody else, I, I have a hard time relating with you um, because you can't relate with me. I just do, you know? And it's, I would much rather have a great conversation with somebody that's blue collar than, than have a forced, contrived conversation with somebody that's never, sweated a day in their life um, and that's way off the topic of Uber but 
it's kind of a life conversation and I'm honest enough to admit that guys if I'm a jerk for saying that I'm okay I am I mean I'm kind of a jerk I know that but it's just me you know like it's just hard for me to relate to somebody that's never had a struggle in their life never had to pay a bill late never had to sweat as to when they're gonna you know whatever um you know, there's been plenty of times in my life over the past 30, 40 years when I've had financial struggles or stress or whatever. You know, you just, those oh shit moments in your life where you're like, what am I going to do? Um, and somebody that's never endured that, never had to sweat like that, never had a sleepless night worrying about what they're going to do, it's hard. A part of me envies them, but a part of me doesn't because I feel like those those tough moments are, are moments that they kind of make you break you. But, you know, it's like Muhammad Ali always used to say, it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up. And I could be wrong on that quote. It might not be Muhammad Ali. It might be somebody else. But I'm pretty sure that's a Muhammad Ali quote. Uh, it might be somebody else. Outside chance. I'm not as knowledgeable with boxing as I am with some other sports. So, but it's a great quote, irregardless. It's not how many times you get knocked down that counts. It's how many times you get back up. And I feel like that's, you know, one of those life lessons that I've always held true to. And it's it's hard. I mean, I'm mean, not going to lie. 2017 and 2018 have been rough, rough. <laughs> really rough. I've had a lot of crazy stuff go down lately but you know you just have to keep going you just have to find a way to keep going uh, it's not always easy you know and you guys know this I'm preaching to the choir you guys know what it's like you guys have things in your own lives you know you've had people that you've lost recently or you've had financial headaches or you've had relationship issues or kid issues or whatever Everybody's had those things happen to them. And, excuse me, sometimes they're tough. Sometimes it, it shakes you. And you really gotta catch yourself before you can get back in the saddle. Uh, you know, and that's, that's the tricky part about this is that sometimes you just feel like the witch, you have to. You know, if you're, if you're like me, you have to because you know people count on you. Uh, you know, your family counts on you. You know that, um, you know that you're stronger than, than all that stuff. And sometimes you got to, like, Jedi mind trick yourself into believing that. You know, it's, you, you got to con yourself, convince yourself before you can convince the world. But you have to. You have to just keep going. Um, you can't let it get you down. And if you do feel like it's getting you down, you've got to find a way to express it. Um, you know, if you can't turn to a friend, if you can't turn to somebody, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it or you're shy or embarrassed or whatever, you know, then find another outlet besides, you know, doing something drastic, you know, whether it's you paint or whether it's you go, for, go to the gym and you, whatever you do to burn off that steam, you got to find some way to express yourself and get that energy out so it doesn't become toxic inside you. Um, you know, I've had a rough couple months between the stuff with my daughter and then my mom with her Alzheimer's and just, you know, the financial chaos of the holidays and all the drama that's been kind of just percolating in my family life right now. Um, you know, my mother-in-law passed away a couple weeks ago and, you know, that's got my wife all jacked up in the head uh, and my kids because they had very mixed emotions about her. And, you know, there's just a lot of, lot of stuff going on. And sometimes I say to myself, you know, wow, it's too much. You know, it's too much. But it isn't. And you just keep going. You just have to, you have to keep going. You have to do it, even if you don't think you can. You just have to keep trying. Um, and that's where I am, guys. That's where I am some days, too. Some days you just feel like, oh my God, it's too much. What did I do? Why me? But you have to keep going. Um, there's people out there that count on you, that care about you, and you have to, you have to keep pushing on no matter what. 
Um, even if you don't necessarily know why, just do it. So there's my little motivational speech. I know it's a long video and I'm rambling. It's 3 a.m., guys. This is kind of what you get when it's 3 a.m. and I'm making a video. You know that. My condolences. I'm sorry if you, uh, if you made it through the full 25 minutes. There's a prize. I'll get back to you on the prize. But, um, you know, it's 3 a.m., guys. So sometimes I go a little philosophical. But, you know, looking to be a good week. Just an FYI, I will only be working till Thursday. I am taking a, uh, a road trip, as it, as it were. Not fun. Um, but I'm getting a U-Haul truck and I'm driving down to the Eastern Shore while my mom had some storage units with some stuff because she's not living on the Eastern Shore anymore and I got to get that crap out of there. So I'm going to take a three-day and drive down Friday. I'll have Friday night, Saturday to go through all that crap, see what's worth keeping and what's worth just chucking at the dump um, and then bring back whatever I need to bring back and resolve that on Sunday. So... Um, I won't be on the road Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's going to be kind of a weird week. That's why I stayed out late on the road tonight. Um, and obviously Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be on the road. Um, but Friday and Saturday and Sunday, you won't see me. You won't see me back until the following Monday. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Um, everybody, that you, uh, if you've been out there following me and you're not sick of me yet, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a couple weird weeks for me, and I appreciate you guys just being patient with me, but uh, I'm trying to get back in the saddle um, for myself, you know, as well as for you guys. These videos are as much about catharsis for me. It's a way for me to wrap up my thoughts, close my evening out mentally in my head. Um, but sometimes just talking about some of this stuff is like, you know, it's kind of like... Um, self-therapy, if you will. I get to kind of vent and put some stuff out there for myself and for you guys. So kind of video diary style. So hopefully some of it benefits you guys. If not, thanks for being patient with me. If you're new, yes, this is me. It's weird. I know, but I talk about all different stuff. It's not always about Uber and Lyft. Um, there's lots of good ride sharing wisdom in here, but Sometimes it becomes life wisdom too. And, you know, I'm a 40-year-old guy if the, if the gray beard didn't already tell you that. Um, and I've had my ups and downs and, you know, I'm trying to share that with you guys. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this is educational as well as entertaining. Um, one or the other, at least. I don't know. Take it for what you will. But thank you, everybody out there. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Get some sleep. I need to. I really do.